Hello, welcome to month five of my TBR Zero vlog. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Julianne. I own far too many unread books and I am starting an epic quest. And I say starting because I have read hardly any of them so far in this project, um, to read every single book that I own. Um, it's also an epic quest because it's going to take me a very, very, very very long time and you know what's made it worse the fact that i haven't read enough books <laughs> from my tbr each month i have been distracted by other things but this month i am determined to turn it around i am determined to feel proud at the end of the month if you've watched my planning video you'll see that on my tbr this month is 15 books and that i don't think it's realistic for me to read all of them but i am going to try <laughs> And with that, on this day one, November the 1st, 2023, I am going to um, attempt to get halfway through Sahara. So Zahara, um, or Zara? I don't know. I need to like listen to a sample of an audiobook or something so I know how to pronounce the main character's name. Um, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? I got in a Illumicrate box a couple of months ago and I missed the read-along, basically, because I had too much other stuff going on. <laughs> so I did not read it then, um, and I'm determined to read it now. This is the first book that I want to read in November, the first book I want to finish in November. Um, I suspect I won't. Um, I suspect that I'll probably read a graphic novel first, um, because I can read those whilst eating dinner. I do not eat my dinner whilst reading these beautiful Illumicrate hardback editions. Um, that would be silly. I will splash onto the pages. I will. I've done it before. Not on an Illumicrate book, but on um, other books, which I should not be splashing onto, which is all books, really. Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is uh, my plan. <laughs> Read halfway through this and see how we get on. Um, I'm about to put my soup on for dinner, so I'll try and read a few pages whilst that's cooking. Um, and then uh, during my dinner, I'll read some of Witch Hat Atelier on um, the iPad. And then after dinner, I'm going to get ready for bed um, and continue with Zara or Zahara, however it's pronounced. And I will find out how it's pronounced. <laughs> Another piece of useful information for those of you who are new here, I am filming all of these videos on a two month time delay. Um, this is because of everything else going on in my life. I don't want to be forced to edit videos very quickly. I want to have a little bit more leeway. That's why I've done that. It is Sunday the 5th of November and as you can see, I did not get halfway through Zara. <laughs> uh, I actually haven't read very much over the last couple of days. Um, because I had a illness flare up, um, my chronic health problems kicked in again, and I've been very, very tired, um, but also very busy with work and with a friend's birthday party. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> you can see this room is in a bit of a mess at the moment. That's because we had some problems in the kitchen, so a bunch of stuff had to get moved in here. Um, but yeah. I am now settling in to read this for a little while and drink my hot chocolate or the rest of my hot chocolate um, and then I'm going to go have a shower um, in a minute. Hello, you're in one of my kitchen cupboards because <laughs> it was the easiest way to fit the camera into this room when the lighting is like super bright <laughs> right above me because it's, a, well, it's not really a spotlight, it's like a massive light bulb but it's built into the ceiling um or downstairs i only have like one light bulb traditional light bulb kind of drop light i don't know if that's the right term um anyway hi welcome to my kitchen um <laughs> it's been a few days it is now uh tuesday 7th of november um i still have not finished zara um I am really enjoying it though and I've got um like a reasonable way through not quite halfway yet but I I have put in, put in some time and I have been reading it um what I am doing really well at however is uh audiobooks I managed to polish off two audiobooks yesterday um I finished Geekerella by Ashley Poston um which is a YA book um it's got a Cinderella retelling basically about um 
a girl who um, really loves this one particular TV show, sci-fi TV show, and um, she wants to enter this cosplay competition and she gets like a random text from a random guy who turns out to be the star of the kind of film remake of this TV show. Um, and yeah, they kind of get to know each other over text, but there's all of these like factors because it's Cinderella and yeah, her life is, is dramatic. <laughs> um, I did quite enjoy that. It was, I, um, listened to it kind of as a commute, as a commute book. So I only really listened to it as whilst, um, on the train and I'm walking from the train station to my job. Um, so my new job, which I started a few weeks ago, uh, basically involves me going into one station and walking. Um, I could get the tube or a bus, but it's pointless. The walk is only at 25 minutes. Um, and if a walk is half an hour or less, I just do that rather than take additional public transport. Um, especially if I can avoid the tube because um, the tube is just like such a grim experience. <laughs> Even if it might save me 10 minutes, it's just not worth it. I don't think it even would save me 10 minutes. I think it would save me five. So um, instead I have been um, using that time to walk and listen to um, an audio book. And that's the one I started with and I finished it. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, and then I also have two non-fiction books on the go, which I have also been um, tying to specific tasks. Um, so I've been listening to, um, where is it gone? Uh, Dancing in the Streets by ba Barbara Ehrenreich. And now this um, is subtitled A History of Collective Joy. So it's kind of like a historical survey kind of book where it talks about um, all these different things that people in the past have written about um, kind of collective celebration, uh, how that feeds into religion, kind of ecstatic worship. It's really, really interesting. Um, it's a big dose for the anthropology, which I have not had much like kind of previous experience in, um, but it's super fascinating. And I've been listening to that while I cook. Um, so that's kind of my cooking <laughs> book. Um, although today I'm going to kind of break from that because I'm really close to the end. And I think it will be fantastic to try and finish it this week. Um, I have uh, one hour and 48 minutes left, which I feel like is an achievable goal to finish that. Um, that's at the actual speed I listen to, which is uh, for this book, uh, 1.95 speed and then when i go for a walk like a dedicated walk not a commute just like i am going for a walk i have been listening to an absolutely loving um where is it gone it's because i have them downloaded on different devices i have like <laughs> a tablet for listening to the um to, to listening to dancing in the streets um because it's my cooking book um and if i don't feel like listening to it um after a while i switch to youtube on my main phone the phone i actually take out and about with me um that's where i had my commute book and then the walking book is on my spare phone um which i just use for audiobooks when i'm um going on a walk um so that's like just a totally different um device and so they all have different things on them so when i want to check on one phone, um, which I have to do, I can't just go get the other, um, because it is upstairs and it has no charge. Oh, here we go. It's called um, Why We Make Things and Why It Matters by Peter Korn. Um, now this book was referenced in a book I finished, uh, was it last month? Yes. Um, no, September. I finished it in September. I keep forgetting it's not October anymore. Um, uh, Making is Connecting by David Gauntlet. So that this was referenced in it. Um, and it's basically kind of like a kind of an autobiography, but also kind of um, philosophical reflection on the nature of craft and and the importance of making things with one's hands. And it's really, really interesting. I am really, really enjoying it. I'm finding it really inspiring um, and motivating. And yeah, it makes me want to make more things with my hands. Um, I'm usually kind of a, I guess, a creative of my brain rather than a creative of my fingers. Um, but I do love crafts. I just don't pursue them like that uh, with that much dedication. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's really good. So yesterday I finished Geekerella and then because I finished it at lunchtime because what I've been doing sometimes at work is going and sitting in the park um, or uh, yesterday it was quite cold so I actually went and sat indoors in my building and I've been listening to um, my commute audiobook whilst eating 
Um, so I finished Geekerella and I decided to start a new book on the way home and I started More Me With You by Alex Bertie, which I absolutely loved. It was brilliant. It was so much fun. It was just this perfect quirky romance um, story. So um, it's basically about a um, trans guy called Will um, who has moved to Bristol to kind of start um, his new life basically. He, he graduated with a degree in robotics and he's trying to kind of find a job like, uh, in that field but in the meantime he's working in a bookshop and living with his friend Emma um, and um, she's just really kind of pushing him to get out there and date um, but he's not really finding anybody but then um, this annoying guy from his um, jiu-jitsu competition starts working at the same bookshop um, and it's sort of like it's a novella so it's quite short it's so it's not like fully enemies to lovers but it has that kind of vibe um and it's just really cute they're just big nerds and is anything better than nerds falling in love no <laughs> um i would say that because i am a nerd in love with a nerd so you know that's how it goes um so yeah i finished that and that was brilliant and i'd highly recommend it um and so yeah i haven't picked out a new commute book because i'm not commuting again until next week because i've got time off this week so now while i am tidying up the kitchen putting some laundry away um and uh running uh sorting out so i can run my um robot vacuum upstairs and then coming back downstairs and cooking dinner i'm gonna listen to some more dancing in the streets because i would really like to get that one that one done and ticked off because I, uh, I I categorized my audible library which is predominantly the plus catalogue um, and discovered that I have more non-fiction than anything else so I think I need to get a cracking tick off some of this non-fiction um, in my bids to get rid of audible um, sometime this century um, and also because I finished two audiobooks yesterday I'm kind of on a high um, I've been thinking about like how I can read as much as possible before the end of the year to get my reading uh, challenge total up as high as possible, all of that kind of stuff basically to motivate myself. Um, but yeah, once I've got dinner on, um, I will turn off the audiobook um, and read Zara if I have time, and I'll read Zara after dinner if I have time. But till then, it's going to be audiobook time. Hello, welcome to the 18th of November. Yes, the 18th of November. It's It's been a little while. Um, that's because there was Thought Bubble. <laughs> so, uh, last week I was chugging away little doses at Zara. Um, I'm feeling quite pleased with how it's going. It's, it's not not that great but I was I was getting into it I was enjoying it and suddenly I remembered it was Fort Bubble um and that there were loads of comics that um either I had bought or Nick had bought um the previous year that I hadn't read yet he's much much better at reading his recent purchases than me um I have to say there was loads of stuff there that he had read um, and I had read um and I basically read the one thing that I had bought I hadn't read and I asked him to make me a pile of all the stuff that he had bought and not just the thought bubble stuff just like comics for, for the last year <laughs> uh, so now that's that big pile plus there's a pile of all the stuff that I bought and all the stuff that he bought um, I'm not going to do a haul um, in this segment of this video because it is night and I don't think that the, everything is going to look its best so um, if there's a bit more light um, at some point tomorrow or some point else in the next week um i will film some haul footage for you um, and show you what i bought and hopefully also i'll have read some of it because i want to read it straight away this time um especially when i can like put it on instagram and talk about it and encourage people to buy from these people uh gifts for christmas so yeah i'm trying to try and do that um early because that would be a really good idea i think to support all these independent creators that i've bought things from um but yeah i'm gonna tell you what i managed to read in the run-up to Fort bubble and also um during and after Fort bubble itself so uh the thing that i had to read that i bought last year um was the um lockdown corona diary collection by emma evans now um the first one is actually a like hardback book which i believe was um on kickstarter um, and then there's two sort of zines printed um by the author um which kind of 
continue the story, they're companion zines. Um, and um, I kind of bought this because I, I wrote a novella set during the um, pandemic myself, whilst it was still going on. Like, I think I started writing it a couple, a couple of weeks, a couple of months after kind of the end of the, the time period which is covered in the story. Um, anyway, if you want to find out more, more about that, there's a whole video uh, on my channel talking about it, um, uh, which I'll put up wherever it goes. Um, and you can also find that in the description. Um, and uh, there's also information on my website as well. But anyway, because of me doing that, I kind of have an interest in um, kind of literature about the whole period. So when I saw this at Fort Bubble last year, I had to get it. Um, I just kind of bought it on a whim um, and I had full intentions as always of reading it right away I did not um, but yeah I read it um, last Thursday not the one has been but the one before before Fault Bubble um, I really enjoyed it here's just a little sample of what the inside is like so it's it's a di it's basically a diary comics um, set during lockdown um, and yeah it was really evocative of that time it was really interesting reading it like I think a fair amount of time has passed now obviously and um, yeah, it was kind of, it was really interesting to sort of go back to that via the medium of these diary comics. Um, another couple of things I read were by um, Zoe Farragut. So I read uh, Brainworms, which is sort of like a series of sort of like scribbles. I guess it's sort of diary-ish, but it's sort of just more sort of stuff that's popped out of. Um, uh, the creator's brain. <laughs> um, it's the best way to describe it, really. It's it's very it's a very short read, um, and it's sort of funny but dark at the same time. Uh, much like um, it's only at the centre of the earth, which is a sort of autobiographical um, novel about um, yeah the the author's kind of experience of mental health problems um, and how. Um, yeah, they committed to basically doing this book um, while they were going through some stuff. Um, and it, it's really interesting and um, really good. So yeah, recommend that. Um, and then uh, on the theme of mental health, um, I finally read Barking by Lucy Sullivan, which I had meant to read, read for a very, very long time. Um, I remember before this even came out, went to uh, a couple of events around it. Uh, I have like a print um, by the artist, everything, yeah. So I'd been meaning to read this for absolutely ages. <laughs> um, and it is stunning. It's really thoughtful. The art is incredible. Um, I would strongly recommend again. Um, and then I read um, Endswell, the complete series um, by Peter Morley. And um, this is sort of like a kind of family drama saga in five parts. <laughs> I'm not going to pull them out here because it's actually really difficult to get them back into the slipcase and um, I don't want to damage Nick's slipcase. It was quite difficult the first time around to put them back in um, and when he put them in here in the first place. Um, so these actually came out over multiple over multiple years and then uh, Peter produced this um, slipcase to keep them all in. Um, um, it's basically a story about um, the author's family and um, what happens when um, his grandmother uh, has a new man kind of move in with her who they suspect is strongly taking advantage of her um, but how complicated this is due to the fact that his grandmother was always a very strong-willed person who used to run um, like a horse breeding company basically and dog breeding or did she just like keep no, I think it was dog breeding as well. But yeah, um, and yeah, it was sort of like kind of a bit surreal because of the strange nature of the business and um, kind of thoughtful. But it has this kind of like curious um, and very interesting sort of detachment from it because the author is sort of a child in some of the stories. And so it's yeah, it has this really interesting sort of sort of interesting bits where it's removed and other bits where it's not so removed, um, which I think is, you know, a really interesting thing to explore because that, that's the nature of being in a family and going through different life stages where everybody else is dealing with stuff at the same time. Um, so yeah, I would really, really recommend this. It's great. Um, 
and then on the way to Fort Bubble, um, I started reading um, the new Whip Comics Collective Anthology Change, um, which my partner Nick has uh, a story in. I haven't actually got to his story yet. <laughs> um, I am like this way through. So I started reading it on the way um, after he read it because he brought it with him to read. He finished it and then I started reading it and then I read it um, when I was back at the hotel room while he was out and I wasn't feeling very well um, on a couple of nights. I read some bits of it from that. Um, and I think, I, did I read a little bit on the way home? can't remember but I still haven't finished it but it's quite long <laughs> um and this is great there's some really really interesting stories in here loads of different art styles being explored loads of different storytelling techniques um yeah it's it's really great I would strongly recommend it I think um a um comics review site called it the book of the convention or the book of the festival um so yeah there we go that's a recommendation that's not just for me um and then on the way home, um, I kind of read over Nick's shoulder until I just was so tired. I could not be fully conscious anymore. I had to close my eyes. I'm not sure if I fell asleep or if I was just sort of too tired to fully be in the world at that moment. Um, <laughs> but he definitely kept reading whilst I opted out. But before I got to, just too tired to um, continue on the way home, um, we read Don't Worry, I Die at the End, um, a collection of 100% True Diary comics, which is another one about mental health. And um, this one's by Beck Kubrick. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's again, sort of like snippet kind of diary comics. Sometimes they're just sort of ideas that are being explored um, in graphic form. Um, uh, it's, it's not like sequential. There are, I guess there's a couple of like mini stories which are kind of sequential but the whole thing isn't sequential um, and yeah I really enjoyed that that was um, very very dark in places as you might be able to tell from the title um, but really good um, and then the last thing I read on the way back from Fort Bubble this is so dark <laughs> I read the um, Mr Blobby themed horror anthology Blobby Horror, Blobby horror. Um, <laughs> uh, I had actually already heard, out, heard about this before Nick picked it up um, um, like on social media and I'd actually read a couple of the stories in it already um, and just thought they were amazing um, yeah it yeah what can I say uh, Mr Blobby is a it's kind of hard to describe if you're not from the UK and you're not like a millennial or older um, yeah, so Mr. Blobby was like a parody of a children's character which was invented for like a Saturday night light entertainment show um, that was like on in the evenings and like loads of, you know, loads of people would watch. Um, yeah, and he became like a, yeah, so he was like a parody children's TV character where he like, didn't have any backstory, it was just like this pink and yellow pink and yellow spotted creature called Mr Blobby who just ran around yelling Blobby and doing slapstick comedy or something I don't know I always found it a bit creepy my sister had Mr Blobby come to her birthday party once and it was like not scary because it didn't really resemble the actual Mr Blobby too much it was like a furry kind of suit and the real Mr Blobby was sort of more like inflatable looking um, <laughs> so I think you know I was quite a bit older um than the sort of demographic who would believe in real Mr Blobby anyway um but yeah I think it was kind of de-creepified for me due to the obvious fakeness like it wasn't even the real Mr Blobby of the TV um but it was still pretty weird um and yeah um Mr Blobby kind of became a weird like national sensation where there was like Mr Blobby song that like did it get to number one who knows um did really well in the charts um there was a Mr Blobby theme park that was set up that um became like a major destination um for urban explorers in recent years um because it did not last very long at all it got shut down um and like bits of the theme park were just left abandoned in like the woods <laughs> so yeah i think it has all gone now um but yeah back in the day i used to have a bit of a thing for looking at urban exploration websites and there were some people who got some really interesting photos of it um but yeah so yeah this is a this is a anthology that's very UK specific and very like 
that generation specific um but it's really good <laughs> Um, so yeah, now, now, what am I reading? I am in the middle of several things. Obviously I'm still reading Zara. Um, I decided not to take a print book with me to Thought Bubble because it just takes some room in the suitcase and the weekend is so intense, there's almost no time for reading. Um, so I started my Nook, my e-reader, um, and I started reading, uh, where are we? Currently reading One Christmas in Paris uh, by Mandy Bagger. And Mandy Bagger is one of my favourite um, kind of go-to Christmas authors. Um, she writes um, romantic comedies set in different places, which always have like a really like strong heart to them. There's always like um, other issues going on in the protagonist's life, so they always feel really rich, um, and it's all explored in really great detail. This is actually one of her earlier books, and I'm not like loving it as much as I have enjoyed the more recent ones of hers that I've read. Um, I mean, she's been writing for quite a long time. Um, and this one was published in 2016. I think the more recent ones I've read have been like the, uh, like 20, I think like at least a couple of years later, I think they've mostly been like the 2020s ones that I've read. Um, but yeah, they, I, um, I really, really, um, just wanted to, read something easy and light uh, for the, the train that I knew would be like a solid read so that's why I picked that one up um, and then I decided that um, I would also start a, a Christmassy audiobook because uh, there are so many Christmassy audiobooks um, that I want to read it doesn't feel right to listen to them in January <laughs> um, I feel like I should get over this considering I'm a Christmas um, aspiring Christmas author um, and I have written Christmas books, dr drafts of Christmas books at times of year that are not December, not even November. Um, so, um, you know, I've been working solidly on one of them for like two years round the, round the calendar. Um, so I should really get over this, but no, it just feels a bit weird. Um, so I want to get as many Christmas books in as I can. So I thought I'd start a Christmas audiobook. And I realised that with the Spotify audiobooks, you only get a certain number of hours per month to listen to. And so I was like, if I want to knock off a couple of Christmas audiobooks via Spotify, because they have some stuff that's um, not at the library and isn't on the Audible Plus catalogue, um, I'd better get started. So I was like, okay, right, you get like 15 hours a month at the moment. Um... Uh, what can I get that's within that kind of limit that I could listen to in November? And I had just um, seen on NetGalley the Christmas Orphans Club, uh, but because it basically I went on NetGalley just to check for Christmas books that were new, nothing else, nothing else. I did request you. Um, let's not um, talk about slippage. It's only for Christmas books. Only for Christmas books. Um, I broke a rule, but only for Christmas books, and they haven't been approved. So I might not even technically have broken the rule, they just request them, I suppose that's enough for breaking the rule. But if I read them really quick, it's okay, right? I don't know, I feel bad for breaking, I feel bad for breaking one of my few actual rules, but I just really wanted to read some Christmas books and to keep on top of like my Christmas reading, because I feel it's like one of the few areas in which I'm actually on top of it, um, and like I'm actually become quite expert in Christmas books. I even have a Christmas books quiz on my blog where you can find out, where you can find like your perfect Christmas book by answering questions. Um, and every year I add more and more books to it. So it's really important to me to just kind of keep up on new Christmas books. I mean, I'm never gonna read them all, but um, you know, I want to know what's out there, what's new. Anyway, on Nekali, but I didn't request Nekali, I saw the Christmas Orphans Club, um, which is by Becca Freeman um, and it's set in New York and it's about a bunch of um, people who don't like have um, they ever don't have a family that are estranged from their family or they don't celebrate Christmas with their family for some other reason like they're not you know following that religion they their family for a different religion um, and um, yeah, basically it's about the current, the kind of now Christmas, um, one of them's moving away and their plans around that, but it's also about the Christmases of the past and the things that went right and the things that went wrong. And it kind of starts off with some of the Christmases that went right and how they kind of cemented their friendship. Um, and um, now we're seeing some of the Christmases where I'm at now, which is like um, over halfway through. Um, I'm seeing some of the Christmases where uh, things started to go wrong. Um, and that's really interesting. And I'm really, really enjoying it. Everybody in this book is a total disaster. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a disaster bisexual, disaster gay, and a disaster straight person. Um, at least I think they're straight. They haven't mentioned not being straight, as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, it's, it's disasters all round, um, and that's really entertaining. Um, their kind of dating life mishaps. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, I've got three hours and 26 minutes left. So actually what I'm going to do now that I've updated you on where I am, um, is I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to put the dinner on whilst listening to some more of it. I'm going to hang some laundry out whilst listening to some more of it. Then I'm going to have my dinner. Um, and then, uh, hopefully, uh, if I haven't finished that by then, because three hours, 26 minutes of double speed is only like, it's less than two hours. Um, and, um, yeah, hopefully if I haven't finished this by then, I'll be very close. Um, uh, I might be able to finish it tomorrow whilst like getting ready in the morning and stuff. Um, or maybe on Monday, the same. Um, and yeah, then I'll be able to pick out a, uh, probably one from Audible. Um, because I won't have enough hours left to finish one off on Spotify. So maybe I should start one. Maybe I should start one and then when I run out of hours, if I run out of hours, I can resume it next month and maybe get full use of all the hours. Hmm. We'll have to think carefully about how to make that one work. Um, <laughs> uh, let me know if you're using Spotify Premium's like audiobook service and how you're kind of getting on with it because I'd be really interested to know if you, um, if you are using it, if you're, if you're a Spotify Premium member and you're using it. Um, but yeah, that's my plan for the evening. Um, yeah, and then try to read some of these comics um, that are new because I've also got some on uh, my my um, tablet as well that I need to get through, um, really, before they go back to the library in a couple of days. They're going to automatically get returned if I don't get on and read them. I've got some witch hat atelier and some other stuff. So it'd be really good if I did that. I forgot to mention, I read a picture book yesterday. I read um, How Does Santa Go Down the Chimney by John Glasson um, and... Mac Barnett. Mac Barnett's the writer and John Classen is the illustrator. John Classen is the person behind um, the uh, I Want My Hat Back series, um, which I have the first one of. I have not read the rest. I really want to. I need to see if they're like at the library or something. Anyway, um, yeah, that was really fun. That's a really cute kids book if you want. If you're looking for a festive Christmas gift for a young child, check that one out. Uh, right, now, gonna get on with the cooking and the hang up laundry and the putting some more laundry on. Um, fun times. See you later. Hello, it is Wednesday, uh, the 22nd of November. Um, I have um, not read <laughs> much in the way of print books, um, but I have almost finished, almost finished an audio book. Um, and I've been making some more progress on that Mandy Bagger Christmas novel. Um, so the audiobook, um, is The Christmas Letter by Emily Stone, which I'm listening to from Spotify because my hours actually renewed. Um, and I only have 54 minutes left, it says. So I think I will be able to finish it, finish it whilst making my breakfast and getting ready for bed. Um, I did, however, just finish a print book. I finished, um, Change, a Whip Comics Anthology. Um, Whip Comics is a kind of comics collective that my, uh, partner is a member of. Um, and they produce a, uh, a themed anthology every year. And this was the latest one. Um, I think I mentioned I started this, um, on the way to Fort Bubble and then I read a little bit of it while I was there and now I've just finished it and I really enjoyed it. There's some great stories in here. Um, my, uh, favourites have to be, I think, The Cat Timeline, uh, Joe Stone's Metamorphosis, uh, by Kafka kind of retelling. Um, and, oh, what was the other one? There was another one I really liked. Ah, if I can remember which one it was, I'll mention it on Instagram when I post there. Um, but yeah, there we go. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I plan on, uh, listening to, um, the rest of that book whilst I get ready for bed. Uh, and then I might re try and read a graphic novel on my tablet as I'm falling asleep, um, because, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I realised today that the next um, Illumicrate read-along has started. Um, 
started actually on Sunday, I think, so I'm now very behind. Uh, I don't know how I missed it. Um, it just occurred to me this morning, oh wait, maybe it started, because it surely should have started by now, because previously it started on uh, the second to last Sunday and finished on the last Sunday, or it's kind of like rolled over. I was like, maybe, maybe it's just going to run over the boundary between months, uh, but it's not. It's already started. I just somehow didn't get the notification on Discord. Um, so I'm a bit annoyed about that, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to try and catch up. <laughs> uh, I still am very slowly going through Zara, um, but not really making any real progress on that because, um, yeah, I've just been really busy and not had any time just going to sit down and read. It's been very... Um, it's it's been a hectic week so far. Um, I've had a creative writing classes um, in the evening on Monday and Tuesday. Tonight's been like my first free evening, although I'm also going to have a free evening on Thursday and Friday. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can catch up. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to pick a new audiobook for tomorrow because um, I'm going to finish this one and I won't have one to listen to on the way to work. So um, yeah. Uh, I probably won't have enough hours left on Spotify to read a whole one, but I could start one, I suppose, and then, but then I'm going to have to wait like 30 days for it to roll over or whatever. So maybe I'll leave that till the end of the month and start something on Audible instead. Because um, I've got to get those Christmas books read on Audible so that I can cancel their subscription. <laughs> um, this is the perfect time to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get on with all that now. See you later! See you later. Hello, welcome to my sofa where I am lying resting. Um, I'm very tired, but I am quite pleased because although I have not finished any physical books yet this month, um, I did have a really good uh, reading day the last couple of days. Um, I today finish uh, like while I was getting ready for work an audiobook from Audible, um, which was A Vicarage Christmas, which was this kind of cute little novella about um, a vicar's daughter who goes home for Christmas and is super reluctant about it, and she runs out of a family party to go to one of the local pubs, uh, where she meets this guy, and she kind of unburdens to him, tells him that she's never been properly kissed, that she feels like the odd one out, and then it turns out he's the new curate. <laughs> which is like I guess like an assistant priest um and yeah he is going to be working with her father um and he knows her family and yeah um it's uh yeah very cute very cute not like it has some bits of religion but it's not like stuffed full of religious stuff um it's mostly just like very cute and cozy um and escapist and then I listened to The Upside Down Christmas, which is another novella. And this I decided to start reading because it's about um, Christmas in Australia uh, from the point of view of a British person who um, has moved there. And is just kind of bewildered by it being hot um, at Christmas time and the whole thing. Um, but she also just has some issues with her family in Christmas. Um, and she's got this flatmate who is like the perfect man. It's kind of unbelievable that they didn't admit they were into each other before this because he is so devoted to her he cooks her food um he like goes out of his way to be nice to her like all the time and it's like come on come on why are we having to have this novella to see how you get together like you should have been together like well before this <laughs> and then over dinner i finished reading witch hat atelier volume eight and I just continue to love this series. It's so wonderful. The art is incredible. I love the characters and the little quirks and personalities and oh, it's just so compelling and lovely and fun. I just highly recommend you check it out. See if your local library has got it on Libby because mine does and that's how I've been reading it. So yeah, that's where I am. That's what I'm doing. I'll update you again soon. Welcome, welcome. It is Monday the 27th of November. And you can see here the scale of my problem with books. <laughs> um, I decided to sit down here because I just spotted this corner and it's reasonably tidy in here. And I thought, why, why not? 
Um, so yeah, here I am to give a little update. Yesterday, um, I basically wore my pyjamas all day and did a load of graphic novel reading. I read every graphic novel I had out of the library on my tablet, which was five. <laughs> so that's made a huge difference to my um, reading challenge goal and makes me feel like I might actually meet it. Um, so I've had a little bit of a change of heart. Um, I don't think that I'm going to prioritise reading the Illumicrate books, except for the few I want to read, uh, except for the most recent ones, because I don't want to like get let that get out of hand. Um, and the um, two that I wanted to read to see if I want to get the sequels um, in the matching hardbacks. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it, which is only like four books. It's only going to be four books. Um, there's only a few days left of November, so I don't know how I'm going to actually do. <laughs> uh, but the rest will roll into December, and that'll be kind of how it is. Um, in my planning video for this month, I actually kind of already discussed that this was going to be like a two-month TBR with all the Illumicrate books, um, because of all the Christmas reading I would inevitably want to do, and I've done so much Christmas reading. I am really getting through the um, Audible books, which is great, and I'm on top of um, getting my money's worth out of Spotify, as well so feeling pretty good on that front and feeling really good on the graphic novel front um, now I've finished um, the uh, graphic novels on um, my tablet what I want to do is really prioritize the physical ones um, because that will make a big dent in my TBR for one um, it will yeah it will hopefully get me approaching 50 books read so I can do a rule change um, much faster um because i think i think in some ways i'm gonna need stricter rules and i think in other ways i'm gonna need more sort of flexible rules i'm definitely gonna change like the um illumicrate thing i'm now thinking i'm thinking that i am going to sort of um do it quarterly because the original books were the original boxes were quarterly so I f I'm thinking now that it actually makes sense not to do like that month's books necessarily but to get all of the books that I received during that quarter um, and try and read those during the quarter because it gives me more time it and means there's sort of a bigger TBR to choose from there's more flexibility I might give that a go for like the first quarter um, of um, 2023 provided I 2024 it's not 2022. <laughs> um, the first quarter of 2024, um, provided I hit that 50 books goal. So that's where the graphic novels are coming in. Um, I'm actually already part way through Isabella and Bloodwen um, by Rachel Smith, um, which is the first one I've kind of picked up from the piles on the dining table. Um, there's also a massive incentive to get them read, and that is not having to have them in piles on the dining room table anymore. Like, I have the whole TBR <laughs> in piles on the dining table. I said dining room table. I don't have a dining room. I only have one room like downstairs. Well, I have two. I have a kitchen and the living room. There's no dining room. I said dining room table because I think in my parents' house we always call it the dining room table, but they have a dining room. I don't have a dining room. It's just a dining table. Um, and it's mainly the game playing table, to be honest. We normally eat dinner in front of the TV and the table is used for board games. Um, we only eat off the table on special occasions like when we've ordered takeaway. <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Yes, so yeah, major incentive to clear off that table because I need that table cleared before decorating for Christmas and all of that. Um, so yeah, um, I have a few minutes left before I'm going to go to a writing class online this evening. Um, so I'm going to try and um, spend the rest of this hour um, reading this and then we'll see how we go. I think this has been a really like, um, I'm sure I'll update again before the end of the month. Um, but I've really been reflecting on this, on this month and my, and my kind of practices around trying to read my TBR and also around vlogging. Like I think what I need to do is film more footage of me reading and then do voiceover over it so that I'm not spending so much time just kind of sitting here talking to you in different locations. Um, cause I don't think that's very interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give that a go. I have been paying more attention whilst um, watching other people's vlogs to see what they do. So yeah, I'm going to try and give that a go next month, uh, which will be fun because it'll be December um, and very Christmassy. 
Um, I mean, obviously it won't come out for another couple of months. I'm going to try and speed up the process. <laughs> um, it's a shame that the Christmas one won't come out for another couple of months, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, I have also considered breaking up these vlogs and doing some, like, if I'm going to spend a whole day, like, reading, um, uh, then doing like a dedicated video for that. Let me know what you think about that in, in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. Anyway, for now, I've got this to crack on with. Let's see if I can finish it. I don't know that I'll finish it within the hour, but we'll give it a go. We'll see how far I can get through it. See you later. Hello, quick little video um, to give you a little update. Tiny, tiny update. Um, yes, I am wearing a very old Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> tie in top, which, um, I think I got when I was a teenager, then never really wore because I was like embarrassed by my, my geek geekiness. Um, but I'm not embarrassed by that now. I've accepted who I am. Uh, <laughs> so when I found it in a, in a drawer, having been carried around for years and years, I decided to start wearing it. Um, and it's cute. I like it. Um, yeah, it's going really well. Um, I am now up to 160 books read this year. Um, which means only 40 to go. <laughs> it's feeling more achievable by the day. Um, I still haven't finished any, any like prose books, but I did yesterday manage to finish Isabella and Bloodwen, and I also finished this other book um, called The Junction. Um, and then today, whilst I was out on my walk, um, I finished listening to the audiobook of Why We Make Things and Why It Matters by Peter Korn, which is an amazing book. I really loved it so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, really great. Uh, kind of um, ruminations on craft and a meaningful life from um, a craftsman. I have just put my soup on. It is 8.30pm. Um, I had a writing class early this evening and uh, ate dinner at lunchtime to prepare it. So I'm having some soup for tea, soup and crumpets, and I am going to try and read um, some more um, graphic novels in print and desperately hope um, not to get any soup on them. Fingers crossed. So that was November. November bit's over. I'm here talking to you in my Christmas jumper. <laughs> this incredibly tacky Christmas jumper that my um, partner gave me years ago um, and I have treasured ever since. It's only from Primark which is a shop that um, since then um, I guess I have declared to be uh, the devil. <laughs> I am a slow fashion person. Um, I'm only most I mostly shop second hand. Last year I bought a couple of items from ethical companies, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go to Primark or uh welcome anybody buying me stuff from Primark anymore. But at the time I at the time I didn't buy from Primark, but that was primarily because their clothes never fitted me very well. Um but yeah, so here we are. <laughs> um I have been uh respecting the fact that this item of clothing was put into the world uh, by the effort of a human um, and yeah treasuring it. Also I kind of enjoy the fact that it's not really like sophisticated or cute or traditional or old-fashioned. Uh, it's basically a fluffy sweatshirt with a pug on it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, back to my November month of reading. Um, so I went completely off piece there. Um, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot. I did not stick to the plan. I didn't even go near the plan. I pretty much immediately decided I was going to do something else. <laughs> and instead I read comics um, and um, the books that I'd recently acquired. I did read that month's Illuminate book, but I did not, um, I did not read any of um, the previous November Loom Crate books that I picked out at the start. I did not read them and I know that I will not be reading them in the next month either because it's it's that time. It's the time of focusing on Christmas books and short books that will help me reach my reading goal because I am very close. Um, well, 
Some people would say not very close, but I feel like it's close enough to two, having read 200 books, which is my ultimate um, dream reading goal. Uh, but I never ever thought I would come anywhere near to reaching. But I'm close enough that I, that I'm, I feel like it's worth a try. <laughs> So yeah, I, I abandoned my plans, I'm not going back to them, I'm going to start over in January, but um, on the plus side, I did read a lot, I did read a lot. So I read 13, 13 print books, um, slash graphic novels, slash collected editions of comics um, that were in my house. Um, at the start of the month. So I'm very, very pleased with that. It it was a really, really comics heavy month. Um, I read more, a lot more than actually went on Goodreads because I was reading shorter things which I didn't put on Goodreads. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm basically caught up on comics um, that are in my house. <laughs> I also have more lined up to read on my tablet, so that's exciting um, and will help me reach that 200 books goal. But all this to say, um, I'm not disappointed with how I've done this month. I uh, feel like me totally deviating from the plans was just poor, poor thought. I, if I'd really thought about it, I could have thought, okay, what's happening in November? Thought Bubble. What will I have wanted to do before Thought Bubble? Read the comics from last year. What will I want to do after Thought Bubble? Read the comics from this year. Pretty obvious, really. What will I want to do when when we're getting um, towards the end of November, start reading Christmas books. I could have thought about this and I could have been realistic. I mean like, okay, we're not going to do the Illuminate project this month. Let's, let's put that on hold. Let's roll that over to next year. But was I realistic? No, not at all. <laughs> um, of course, this may just come up again next year uh in november in which case when am i ever going to read the november and in great books of the past uh, but i don't think so because i've read most of them from this year i have a couple i have a couple waiting to read uh that i may finish off i may not finish off they may have to go off the next year um but yeah only about four like really not very many at all really not very many at all so i'm not concerned about that because if i do end up leaving them to november uh it won't be a it won't be a big project so hopefully next time round i will actually stick to the plan um but i think it's a lesson and i don't think i'm gonna have to think strategically about how i do this whole illuminate business going forward so there we are that's the end of my vlog thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know if you're doing a tbr zero or similar project because i would love to follow you and see how you get along or even just to chat about it in the comments if you don't make youtube videos or you're not on any other social media platforms um you'll see me again soon